All right, so arc length is very, very interesting. Um, most of the time when we look at applications of integration, we want to make sure the function's integrable, but here we actually need f of x to be differentiable, and I'm going to explain to you why. So as long as f of x is a smooth function from a to b, um, then we are going to look at essentially the average rate of change, okay, the distance between these two points. And you're gonna then end up adding up all of those lengths along that curve. And then as you let those delta x values get smaller and smaller and smaller, those lines become the actual curve themselves. Well, one thing that I wanna make sure that I point out here is that essentially we're looking at the Pythagorean theorem. So for each one of those little itty bitty pieces, you have your change in y over change in x to find this piece right here. And that is the line segment, change in x squared plus change in y squared. And then we're gonna let that delta x get really, 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 really small. Um, with some math and magic, some derivatives, some wonderful things here, you can end up factoring out a delta x value. Um, and this is going to end up being what we do. We're gonna add up, okay, those square roots of one plus f prime squared delta x. You can see that math magic here, if you're wondering where it all comes from with factoring it out and all the things. Um, this is just the part that we care the most about. So our equation for arc length is the integral from A to B, square root of one plus F prime squared dx. And I do like to think of this as kind of the Pythagorean theorem-ish, um, because you're taking those lengths of the segments, which would be essentially the average rates of change, and then we're letting that go to zero. So that's where that F prime piece comes into play. All right, so let's look at our first example. Um, if I wanna look at F of X equals two times X to the three halves, and I wanna calculate the arc length from zero to one, then what I'm going to do is I'm first gonna find F prime. So I'm finding the derivative at any point on the curve. Take the power, bring it down 3x to the 1 half. And I'm going to plug into our formula here. So take the integral from 0 to 1, square root of 1 plus f prime squared dx. All right, let's go ahead and square this inside integral from zero to one, square root of one plus three squared is nine, x to the one half squared is x dx. I'm gonna have to do a u sub in order to integrate this. How fun is that? So u is equal to one plus nine x, which means du equals nine dx. Um, when x equals zero, u equals one, and when x equals 1, u equals 10. So we have the integral from 1 to 10. Square root of u. Oh, I did not need to make it that big. That's okay. Um, and then 1 ninth du. So I have 1 ninth u to the 1 half divided by 1 half. That's the same as multiplying by 2 from one to 10. And so that's gonna be two ninths times the square root of 10 minus one. And if you plug that into a calculator, it said three decimal places, you get 2.268. All right, let's look at example number two. So this one's already defined for Y for us. That's really nice. Let G of Y be three, y cubed, 
And let's go ahead and take the arc length of g of y from one to two. So everything here is in terms of y. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and find g prime of y. And that's going to give me 9y squared. So integral from 1 to 2 of 1 plus 9y squared dy. Integral from 1 to 2 of 1 plus, ooh, 9y squared squared, oof, 81y to the 4th. Dy. Now that is not going to be something that we are able to take the integral of um, without doing something more advanced. We don't know that at this point. So we are just going to use technology to do that. And when you do use technology, you get 21.028. So that might be like a TI calculator. It might be Desmos. Um, either one of those is going to give you this as your arc length of this function over the interval.